I'm Antoinette De Silva Fosto, and I'm going to talk to you about birth defects and the risks that are associated with teratogens. Teratogenic drugs, according to the CDC, is any agent that can disturb the development of the baby within the mother. Teratogens halt the pregnancy, or they can produce malformations and birth defects. Anything from radiation the infections within the mother, chemicals, drugs, including alcohol, are considered teratogens. Birth defects. So according to the CDC, they're very common. One out of 33 babies is born with a birth de defect. One out of five deaths within the first year is caused by a birth defect. Um, for a lot of babies born with birth defects, there's no family history, so the family is unprepared, not knowing or predicting what's to come. Also, birth defects are a financial burden on the family and on the government. Hospital costs for one year of children and adults with birth defects has exceeded $2.6 billion, and that accounts for over 139,000 hospital stays. Additional costs due to lost wages or occupational limitations can affect the families as well. Okay, let's talk about infections. According to Keisha, Windrum, and James, cheap torches is an acronym for a special group of infections that can affect the developing baby during pregnancy. It stands for chickenpox and shingles, hepatitis B, C, D, E, introviruses, AIDS, parvovirus B19, toxoplasmosis, other infections such as group B strep, listeria and candida, rubella, cytomegalovirus, herpes, everything else sexually transmitted such as gonorrhea and hmm such as gonorrhea and chlamydia and syphilis. So hepatitis B Herpes and syphilis are sexually transmitted diseases. They pass the blood-brain blood barrier. The chickenpox virus is a risk to women who have not already had chickenpox or who have not been properly vaccinated against the disease. These cheap torches infections are a common cause of birth defects such as mental retardation, learning problems, jaundice, anemia, low birth weight, vision problems, deafness, heart defects, and skin rashes. These infections may also cause stillbirth. Babies are most severely affected by cheap torches infections during the first trimester of pregnancy, when the major organs and structures are developing. Environmental toxins. That's a really wide array of risks that can come at us from different angles of our lives. So it helps for us, especially as women, to be knowledgeable of what we're coming in contact with. According to Keisha, Windrum, and James, some environmental chemicals are known to lead to congenital abnormalities. Mercury is one. It's found in some types of fish, and it's linked to development of neurological problems resembling cerebral palsy, as well as mental retardation. Lead and other chemicals can, have been shown to cause fetal growth restriction and skin discoloration. X-rays can cause problems with fetal development such as spina bifida, cleft palate, blindness, abnormalities of the arms and legs, uh, microcephaly, which is a condition where the brain is too small. The type of abnormality that develops depends on the dose of the X-ray radiation the pregnant woman receives and how far along the pregnancy is. There's no established safe dose of X-ray radiation, however, Dental x-rays and dental cleanings are considered safe. So you need to just talk to your care, your caregiver and um, let them know if you are pregnant or if you think you could be pregnant before you consent to any form of x-ray. Next, radiation and chemotherapy. These are used to treat cancer and they're associated with congenital abnormalities as well. If at all possible, the use of radiation and chemotherapy should be delayed until after the baby has been delivered, but sometimes that's not possible and the risks need to be weighed for each situation with the doctor. Finally, work. 
Women are in the workforce now and we need to consider what we're coming in contact with, but we also need to consider what we're coming in contact with in our homes as well. Um, what may be considered safe for an adult could be very harmful for a fetus. So a woman needs to consider the chemicals that are being brought home by her spouse, by her roommates, or anybody that she's living with so that she doesn't have secondary exposure to chemicals that could be harmful to her fetus. Alcohol. There's no safe known amount of alcohol for a pregnant woman to ingest. So according to the CDC, when a pregnant woman drinks alcohol, so does her baby. Alcohol that's in the woman's blood passes to the baby through the umbilical cord. Uh, there's no safe time to drink during pregnancy, and there's no safe type of alcohol to drink during pregnancy. That includes beer and wine or small amounts. It's not okay. Drinking alcohol during pregnancy can cause miscarriage, stillbirth, and a range of lifelong physical, behavioral, and intellectual disabilities. These disabilities are known as fetal alcohol spectrum disorders, or also known as fetal alcohol syndrome. The best advice is to stop drinking alcohol when you start trying to get pregnant. For every child born with fetal alcohol syndrome, there are another three born with neurological complications associated with prenatal exposure to alcohol, according to Newman. And according to Matson, children prenatally exposed to alcohol can suffer from serious cognitive deficits and behavioral problems as well as from alcohol-related changes in brain structure. Neuropsychological studies have identified deficits in learning and memory as well as in executive functioning, both in children with fetal alcohol syndrome and in children with less severe impairments. Both groups of these children also exhibit problem behaviors such as alcohol and drug use, hyperactivity, impulsivity, and poor socialization and communication skills. To say it plainly, alcohol and pregnancy do not mix. The next teratogen is nicotine. According to, according to Nelson, negative birth outcomes associated with nicotine are miscarriage, stillbirths, preterm deliveries, low birth weight, and infant mortality. Smoking and nicotine are also associated with certain birth defects. Cleft lip and cleft palate are of those, but then there's ear infections respiratory diseases like asthma, and even being around tobacco smoke puts a woman and her unborn baby at risk for these problems. Infants of smokers have a three to four time greater risk of SIDS before two months of age. So quitting smoking before getting pregnant is ideal. For a woman who's already pregnant, quit as early as absolutely possible because there's it's never too late to quit. There's no bad time to quit. Narcotics. So according to Nelson, cocaine, heroin, and methadone are the greatest link to birth defects, low birth weight, and infant mortality. These children who've been in contact with these narcotics show patterns of extreme irritability, neurological disorganization, which is shown through a high-pitched cry fever, sleep disturbances, feeding problems, muscle spasms, and tremors. These children who have been in contact with narcotics have a very high risk for SIDS. And connected to prenatal exposure to cocaine specifically has shown children to have difficulty with self-regulating, greater reactions to stress due to higher levels of cortisol, which is that stress hormone within the body. Then they have continued problems from prolonged exposure to cocaine, uh, like problems with fine motor coordination, difficulty focusing, and sustaining attention and school adjustment problems. For prevention of birth defects within your child, quit smoking before conception if possible and avoid being around smokers. You want to stop drinking alcohol entirely when you get pregnant or before even trying to get pregnant. You do not drink any alcohol during pregnancy. 
stop using narcotics before pregnancy and talk to your healthcare provider often. Talk about what medications you're on, what medications you're considering starting and what medications you want to stop. And this includes prescriptions and over-the-counter medications. Everything needs to be discussed with your doctor. Also talk to your doctor about vaccinations. You want to make sure you're up to date because you're protecting yourself and your baby. Contact your HR about any chem chemical information that you might be coming in contact with at work. Also make sure that those living with you are doing the same because you don't want that secondary exposure. Finally, know what you are putting in your body because essentially you are also putting it in your child's body. I want you to feel like you're alone trying to battle the world of teratogens by yourself. There is help out there. Please feel free to contact the CDC, their website, their phone number. They are there to help. They have a lot of classes and pamphlets and, and help and even counselors and support groups to make sure that you and your child are healthy. In the top right, I have an article which contains a list of known harmful chemicals within workplaces and homes. And at the bottom, this is just an app that uh, helps, helps people quit smoking. And through the apps that I've looked at, this one I feel like is definitely the most beneficial, but find what works for you. This one has support groups within the app. It, it shows you each day that you've not smoked, how much time that's added into your life, how much money you're saving, and all the things that you're going to be bringing into your life as you're taking out smoking. So please feel free to, to find support wherever you can and use my resources. The references for everything that I've talked about today are listed here. Please feel free to look into them because there's more information that I wasn't able to talk about today. And, and there's a lot of help within these resources. I hope I've been helpful and I definitely hope that I didn't uh, stutter too much for you guys. Thank you.